to another episode of Safe Cigarettes Presents, A Ghost in the Magazine. I'm Steph. And I'm Elle. And this week's episode was Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall is a sci-fi horror movie from 1986. It's just a little over an hour long. And boy, let me tell you, it's a piece of work. The skinny of the plot is... For some reason, they feel like mall theft is a big enough problem to drop mad dollars and create these robots that look a lot like Daleks to protect them all from robbers and whatnot. And not only did they spend mad dollars to create these things, they spent even more money to create a very action movie-like presentation to show these things off. It literally looks like... (laughs) You're watching a whole ass movie. Surprise, it's just a commercial. So I'm just really wondering what kind of money this town had to just throw around, but I'm pretty sure it could have been put to better use. But hey, it was 1986. It was a different time. So basically, horny teenagers who work at the mall end up staying there overnight. Surprise, lightning strikes, and now these things malfunction and try to murder the teenagers. And they have to figure out a way to outsmart it. That's it. That's the movie. That's what happened. Dull Man versus Evil Toys vibes mm. throughout. The yeah. lightning, the guy getting hit and then falling over and bleeding and like being dead, mm. supposedly. I wanted Grandpa Brick to be there. He would have saved it. I mean, I really feel like he was supposed to be there and he called out at the last minute and said, can't make it. And they said, well, shit, we have to improvise. Yeah. But you know who was there? Barbara Crampton from Reanimator. These people, oh god, it was just so full of shit. Like second chick that died. Sorry, <laughs> one of them. I but, forgot about okay. the himbo bimbo couple. The himbo bimbo couple. It just makes me so very tired. I didn't have a good time, and I got lost at some point in there because it just could not hold my interest. But I did make it to the end. They're really talking about how these things are sleep darts because the people who are watching this presentation were basically like, you can't just have robots killing people out here in these streets. And they were like, oh, no, no, they're neutralizing them. They don't kill anyone. And I was like, oh, you're setting this up. Okay. Obviously, that's not going to be a thing. And they're like, no, sleep darts. What do you mean sleep darts? Kids shoplift a lot. You know, young teenagers, children who don't know any better, and you're not going to hit my child with a sleep dart. That's a lawsuit just waiting to happen. You can't ever give anybody any kind of medically active substance and not risk killing them anyway. So even something like that is killing someone potentially. Let's talk about the guy in the beginning, though, who says the one in the middle has an unpleasantly ethnic quality. That's (gasps) what we started the movie out with. And I was ready to throw fucking hands at that point. I didn't even hear that. Because if I would have heard that, I would have paused it. (laughs) So wait a fucking minute. I kind of had to. Yeah, I was like, what am I getting into? (laughs) So they make all kinds of gross comments. There was this comment in the um, pizza parlor where the two girls, Susie and the other one, the badass one, I forget her name. They're talking Mm -hmm. about all of this food and like oh, where is it going? And she's like, to that man over there. And she says, oh, that orca beach is here every night. What a mean way to say an overweight person is coming in there to enjoy more food than you would eat. Like, fuck you. Let the guy fucking eat his anchovy pizza and butter. Who gives a shit? Besides, orca's not even a good insult. They're a streamlined whale, okay? Call him (laughs) a freaking sperm whale, okay? Let's go pull Moby Dick. Call me Ishmael, motherfucker. (laughs) As somebody who has been overweight most of my life, I always am very self-conscious about eating in public for that reason. I have also been overweight for most of my life, and I finally got into a place where I'm going to fuck. Food is my love language, and everything on my plate that you see here, I'm going to eat it in this one sitting. And um, if you don't like it, you got to go somewhere else, because I sure don't give a fuck. So that was shitty. And for it being only an hour and some change long, like, did you really have to go those places? Did you? Well, I mean, they had very little content and very bad dialogue overall. But plenty of titties to go around in this movie. Lots of titties. They made sure to get the titties in. When somebody says, I like pepperoni to me, my first instinct is to take my tits out. I was so (laughs) dead at that. He said, I like pepperoni. And she said, oh. And whips her tits out. I was like, okay, I see what kind of insiders you two have going on you clearly have a very deep relationship there were lots of cliche 80s things like they did the montage at the beginning of all the things that 
happen in a typical 80s mall and where I was finished and this is at the beginning of the movie was with those girls in the bathing suits coming down the escalator and that man with all the packages just couldn't contain himself and he fell down because wow that stereotype of like being completely disabled by somebody's body and not being able to function as a fucking human being anymore yeah it's gross it makes you penis havers look bad stop doing that (laughs) stop perpetuating that stereotype in movies okay Oh, there's another one also. I'm just going to call them IT dudes because I don't know who they are. The guys in the white coats. So there was a scene where he pulls a pinup of a lady in a bathing suit and he's staring at it like it's fucking lunch. Okay, you've never seen a lady before. That is another fucking parallel to Doll Man versus Evil Toys because if you remember, that security guard was wanking too. So it's just like a thing that security guards in the 80s did apparently was get horny. Okay, and then there is a lot of peer pressure in this movie and I don't get it. Like the guy with glasses, and of course he has to have glasses because the glasses are what make him responsible and he's like no man I have to actually do the job that I was hired to do it's my uncle's shop and they're like do what we want you to do do the bad thing and he's like okay as long as there's a girl involved which there was pizza shop girl and he's only sexy if he takes his glasses off other than that he's dog food like exactly. he takes his glasses off and looks at himself and then puts them back on and then she takes them off. Yeah, she wouldn't kiss him first. She pushed his glasses up. But you know, yeah. that's I mean, that was a thing in movies for a long time. As soon as you take the girl's glasses off and you straighten her hair, she's a fucking princess now. I'm looking at you, Anne Hathaway. And as a girl with really big curly hair, that sucked me up growing up. I had glasses and big hair and I was brown. So I'm like, oh, okay, well. Whenever I get my hair strained, then I'm pretty. The lady with long, curly, dark hair and her man, they were married, correct? I don't know. I just called them the hot something. couple. Well, they are. And it was especially hot and much appreciated with all the other shit in this movie that she's the one who fixed their truck when it broke down. I was like, that's a boss bitch. Okay. But I think she said something about like for better or for worse or something. So I assumed that they were married. So these white lab coat guys just keep getting taken out. And the other one, I don't even remember what he was doing. But the second one comes in and just picks up a piece of food off of the control panel and puts it in his mouth. It was like the scalpel moment for me. These freaking robots are out here like pinching throats and shit, shooting lasers out of their eyes. And then one of them is this super asshole. One of these robots knocks over the janitor's bucket and then electrocutes him. Like, that's so shitty. You see him mopping the floor. At least wait until he's done to kill him. Jeez. Can we talk about how when it kills people there's just not a lot of blood which is odd for this type of movie usually they go really overboard but i feel like their blood budget was really small or something yes because they spent their budget on um, explosions and fire right i can't with the explosions they keep doing them and they don't have any effect and then all of a sudden it just works yeah and it's like there's no real explanation these things don't have a real weakness because blowing things up generally works on anything there's no real weakness to these things did that one fix itself is that what happened there because it was like disabled and then not they just said oh it didn't die okay i don't get i don't get it I guess they just needed more filler, so they're like, well, gotta bring it back. And then, like, how come this girl, yes, I get her dad is a Marine, but that this short hair girl just knows how to do all this MacGyver shit. They're, like, terrible shots. I don't understand how all these people know how to load and shoot guns, first of all. And they're terrible aim. And she's like, give me that shit. Pops it and it explodes. Like, Let's talk about the fact that when you fucking shoot metal, it fucking ricochets. It doesn't go yeah. into it. Why are you shooting metal? They literally were like, where's the sporting goods store? And then it magically had everything that they need. I just don't understand how lightning strikes do all these things. Like in the Child's Play remake, <laughs> lightning fucked everything up. And now Chucky is evil like you know what i mean (laughs) lightning just isn't like that the other thing that bothers me all right these kids are really fucking in this guy's uncle's store like the disrespect okay 80s friends were bad friends okay they just were like in all of these movies all the friends are shitty (laughs) they're like apart from each other fucking too yeah there's no wall like okay no i as a teenager i know it's different for everybody i didn't care for boys i thought they were idiots not much has changed but (laughs) but you know now i tolerate 
the stupidity. But I didn't in high school because I didn't see the point. So if I was ever in a situation where my friends were like doing stuff with boys and I'm sitting in the corner all awkward, like, no, thank you. And as an adult, I would never do that shit. Like, no. And then they're fine. So they're all fine with it. But then this guy, when he goes to get picky bitch her cigarettes because she only smokes Virginia Slim. He leaves with no shirt on and the doors to the store aren't even locked. He just opens the doors. Mm -hmm. What the fuck did you think you were doing? Not locking the door and then leaving without a shirt on. You're in a mall. You're in a mall. And then when she leaves to go find him, she's not wearing any pants. Booty shakes all out in the mall. Why? It's hot. They're selling (laughs) us sex. That's all they're selling, okay? Because the robots ain't it. Nope. So everyone figures out that the robots are like cutting throats and shit. And their bright idea was to send the girls through the vents to try and get to the parking garage and the men were going to handle it. Well, fucking Susie is freaking out in the air duct. And instead of doing that, she's like, Greg needs me. Like, he needs me. I know he does. And goes back. And sure enough, Susie ate it. Because... She wanted to make sure that the boys were alive or whatever. And yet all she fucking did was scream until she died. Quit your bitching, Susie. You wouldn't last a minute in hot yoga. Like at all. I'm going to put up with a little bit of heat so that I don't get mauled by a killer robot. Right? Stay in the fucking vents, my dude. (laughs) I'm just saying. That's why she got lasered in the leg and then lit on fire. Because she just couldn't. And it just got fucking crazy from there. And there's this one line where they're all like in distress. And this girl's like real serious too. I guess I'm just not used to being chased around a mall in the middle of the night by killer robots. Bitch. (laughs) But then her hot husband or boyfriend or whatever went over and comforted her. So, I mean... All right, I would do that if I thought that was what I was going to get. I mean, sure. But my thing is, nobody really is used to that. And no, I just don't no. think there is any getting used to that. So The, the lines in this were... Mm-mm. Right. Because no. then Greg tried to blame the girls for Susie not staying in the air vent. Like, she's not a whole-ass person who makes her own decisions. It's her own fault she got lasered and lit on fire. That was so. just, like, really over-the-top. The dialogue in that section was ridiculous. Like, I understand you're upset. We're all upset. But we're all in the middle of this together. Sorry. Greg is special. And then right around towards the end, I just couldn't focus on anything because I was really fucking stuck on the electrocution sequences because it was just literally squiggly white lines and people shaking. My note was stop, <laughs> drop, and roll, bitch. <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> just laid there. I, what the fuck? I, you know, I would love to say we never know what would happen in that situation. But I can say that them shits were slow. And so I would just go somewhere where they can't reach me, wait it out until someone comes in the morning to open the mall and yell, disable it, disable it, disable it, <laughs> repeatedly until someone disabled it. There you go. Boom. Problem solved. But do you remember her name? The girl with the short hair? Allison. So Allison was fucking crushing it. Um, She had a level head to the whole thing. Except for that part where she was breaking glass and she broke the top glass and then the bottom glass and crawled through the bottom. Like she didn't need to break the top glass at all. But that's just something I noticed. But she was full of great ideas and she ended up bodying the fucking robot at the end so she saves the day but my thing my issue with all of these moments where they crush the robots is these fucking one-liners okay it's so unnecessary when she capped that bitch she said first hey have a nice day and exploded his ass that was super unnecessary if your life is in danger please just fucking blow it up okay I'm just saying. And then the last one was they're trying to make this sweet little connection between Ferdy and Allison. And, you know, he tells her three times, nice shot, whatever. And then he tells her again at the end. I just feel like there's not enough development here for them to stick that in there as many times as they did. I don't. I want to talk about her in the pet store. She does what I would do, which is stay quiet when the spiders and snakes are crawling over you, which I will give her that credit. But then when she gets Mm -hmm. up, she smashes the spider like a bitch. Spider didn't do (laughs) nothing to you. Spider just crawled on you. I know. The romance between Ferdy and Allison annoyed me. The love at first sight vibes of it. I was very much not in the mood for that right now. It made me... Well, agreed. I wanted the robots to eat them all because of it. But don't you always... Don't you always opt for everybody getting eaten 
instead of like mushy shit. Yeah, that's kind of my vibe. <laughs> There's not yep. really much more to say about this movie. No, ten out of ten, wouldn't watch again. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Easy peasy. Don't waste your teasy. I'm trying to rhyme. It's not really working. Thank you for the suggestion, Matt from Cinema Poison. Which, speaking of, our next episode is actually going to be with Ella, myself, and Matt from Cinema Poison. We are going to be watching Mandy. And you all know how much we love our boy, Nick Cage. And it's going to be a really good time. So that's next Mm -hmm. week's movie. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at GITM Podcast. You can follow me at Witch X Pudding. And you can follow me at Nocturnical. Okay, bye.